investment claims is a one-stop database that contains everything that you need to research international investment law. It contains international arbitral awards and decisions, somewhere around 1,500s and counting. Uh, we add about 180 of them per year. Um, we have international treaties, bilateral investment treaties. We have international arbitration rules. And we also have one of the best selections of secondary source material available anywhere because we have access to the Oxford University Press practitioner database and catalog as well as to journal content that is some of the best journal content and uh, therefore provide people with an ability to really navigate through the secondary literature through the primary sources cited in the secondary literature, through the Oxford Citata, through the decisions cited in the decisions themselves, and then have headnote content to provide short overviews with regard to the uh, key decisions that come out on a regular basis. And these headnotes are drafted by leading practitioners in the field and provide a introduction to what might otherwise be very lengthy materials. Misinformation. People don't know what it is that we're up to. People don't understand what investment law is about, where it came from. They think that investment law is concerned with frivolous claims and involves uh, claimants that would have no business being in an international forum in the first place. To correct some of those misconceptions, the uh, most significant users of investor state arbitration are medium-sized companies. They are medium-sized companies in all sectors. They are medium-sized companies that are the backbone of most of the economies in which they operate. And in most cases, these are people's life savings that we're dealing with, rather than what is frequently said, the you know, faceless claims of the horrible multinationals, allegedly. So it, th there has been a significant amount of misinformation about what we do in the field. And I think investment claims is one of the places that one can understand better what is actually going on because all the materials are there and you can look them up for yourself. The key thing that I would like to drive home is that just because a claim, claim is started doesn't mean that it will actually succeed. So there is a lot about the Philip Morris cases that has been out there as a main reason about why one should be against investor state arbitration. These are cases that didn't go anywhere. If we wanted to get rid of litigation because people could file frivolous lawsuits, we would deprive people of basic access to justice. So. These, this is a field that suffers from people not really understanding what it's about, and I think part of what Investment Claims does incredibly well is to provide people with an explanation of what it is, what it does, what it doesn't do, and what the debates in it are at the moment. Well, I'm excited about the fact that we are getting more of an ability to interact with the general public and get an opportunity to hopefully explain to people what we are about. It is good that I can sit in a taxi in Paris and talk to my taxi driver about what investor state arbitration is because he brought it up with me when I pointed out I'm an international lawyer. Um, so th there are wonderful opportunities to bring the value of international law to a broader public and I think uh, everyone in the field welcomes the opportunity to engage with a broader public about what we're about. I very much loved our discussion about human rights and investor state arbitration. What made it so interesting is that it was reasonably unexpected. There are new connections that are being made, new ways in which investor state arbitration uh, that our investor state arbitration can be used that came out of that discussion and there was a real sense of engagement with other international legal communities. So I think 
that that discussion hopefully will continue and that we will continue to bring different stakeholders together at the Summer Academy and continue the discussions that we have here to make international investment law the best it can be and to bring in as many perspectives as we possibly can.